All right. Uh, why do Americans and other people move to developing countries outside, you know, of the U.S., going to third, from first world nations to third world nations? You're seeing that happen a lot more, especially with the millennials and the generation after them. You're seeing people wanting to go outside of either London, you know, the U.K. or the U.S. or Australia, you know, these rich developed countries and cities and stuff, and they're trying to go to uh, less developed places. Um, you know, maybe they initially go there for the thrill. You know, maybe they just want to get out of their home country and go see something. But then you see people stay there. They stay there for five years, ten years. Some people are, are expats. You know, by the time they're 30 years old, they're just they've said, you know what, I'm uh, I'm just going to stay over here. So why is that happening? Why are people being drawn so much to go to these countries and stay there when you know the U.S. seems to have everything you know that you would want, or the you know the U.K. or or Australia or something? So you know, obviously there's some. Um, there is some downward economic pressure in these developed countries. You know, they're not quite as strong as they were maybe in the 90s or something. So there's obviously that. I think there's really other factors too. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of these, you know, people they sort of grew up in, um, you know, a really sort of cookie cutter environment, and uh, you know, maybe they got financial wealth or you know, comfort or safety, but you know, there's just something missing in their life. So they're just, you know, they needed. They needed some some sort of vulnerability, you know, to the to the world, and I can relate after being in you know Africa for multiple multiple years and just um, you know there's there's also just the fact that your dollar or your currency goes a lot further as well, um, you know one U.S. dollar can buy you you know several days worth of food perhaps um, in some of these countries. So you know there's that aspect. There's also just the aspect that I think. You know, some of these develop, uh, developing countries might, you know, fare better in future economic downturns because, uh, you know, sort of the further higher you up kind of on the the wealth pyramid globally, you know, sort of the further you have the followers. These developing countries are sort of at the point where they're starting to get some nice amenities and, you know, they're starting to become nice places to live. But at the same time, there's still like this connection to the land and, um, you know, there's resiliency and resourcefulness. You know, all stuff that's really like, stuff Americans and a lot of developed country people, like skills that we've forgotten, you know, these things that we are dependent upon the service industry for, um, you know, and so, you know, maybe part of it's just to like really feel like you're sort of alive again, taking care of yourself and doing it in an economically, you know, you know, good way that's resourceful and doesn't require you to have a hundred thousand dollar a year job, uh, you know, to sustain yourself or you know, your loved ones. But, you know, I, th I think uh, I think there's really multiple reasons. I, and I think going forward, we'll see the trend continue. I think, um, you know, people will realize that um, some of these places aren't as, aren't as bad as we realize they are, as we think they are. And that, um, you know, there are other options. And you, know, you add that with the tons of college debt and home mortgages and traffic and pollution and just you know, TV and advertisements coming at you all the time in the U.S. and in developed countries, you know, that all of a sudden it's just like, you know, you start to wonder, like, who's winning? You know, it's kind of one of those thoughts that you had so ingrained in your mind for the entirety of your life, and then all of a sudden one day in your mid-20s it just kind of shifts, and you're like, wow, I got a whole new perspective now, and I can't go back to looking at it the way I was looking at it before. So I think those are some of the thoughts, at least for my own self and talking to other people who have been abroad and you know, either stay over there for multiple years at a time or really decide to live there. You know, there's it's sort of this whole soup of ideas that's kind of swarming around and coming up with these things. But I think ultimately, when you kind of put it together, you know, the scales do uh, get pretty even in terms of how you make that decision. You know, for me personally, it's like my family and friends are still in the U.S. I think that's the biggest draw. You know, you definitely miss family and friends once you move abroad, um, not having them around as much. So, you know, social and human capital is probably – the most important thing to our well-being. Um, so, you know, that's obviously something to weigh too as to why maybe you don't want to go abroad. Um, but there are certainly some enticing reasons, and I think as the years go on, you know, people are seeing that more and more.